Welcome to the Daily Word for the Land. Today's reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, verses 1 to 9, and verse 12. Then he brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There, water was flowing from below the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced the east. And the water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out by way of the north gate, and led me round on the outside to the outer gate that faces towards the east, and the water was coming out on the south side. Going on eastwards with the card in his hand, the man measured one thousand cubits, and then led me through the water and it was ankle-deep. Again, he measured one thousand, and led me through the water, and it was knee-deep. Again, he measured one thousand, and led me through the water, and it was up to the waist. Again, he measured one thousand, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, Model, have you seen this? Then he led me back along the bank of the river. As I came back, I saw on the bank of the river a great many trees on one side and on the other. He said to me, This water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah. And when it enters the sea, the sea of stagnant waters, the water will become fresh. Wherever the river goes, Every living creature that swarms will live, and there will be very many fish once these waters reach there. It will become fresh, and everything will live where the river goes. On the banks, on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food, and their leaves for healing. This is the word of the Lord. The Vision of a River Today's reading is about Ezekiel's vision of a time when the Lord will bring about the wholesome healing of the nation of Israel. Dutifully delivering his visions to his people, Ezekiel became the Lord's instrument to call the people back again to God. This was the time when the southern kingdom Judah had fallen, the temple was destroyed, and the nation was in exile in Babylon. For more than 20 years, prophets asked the question why God has allowed their nation to be ruined. And they responded by asserting that it was because of their disobedience to God. They had sinned against God. In this situation, Ezekiel preached fearlessly the word of God to the exiled Jews in Babylon and the timeless truth about God's love and power. And he encountered a vision of God's grace and blessing will flow like a river from his throne and will renew the promised land. From chapter 47 verses 1 to 9 and verse 12, We have heard the oracle of Ezekiel who had a vision of water, life-giving water coming out from God's altar in his temple. The water did not come from an ordinary well, and God is the real source. In the vision, the water seemed to be at first in small quantity, it was just a trickle, but then gradually poured out. The prophet had a visionary account of the description of a small stream of water that kept on increasing from reaching up to a knee depth, then to the waste part. Finally, it developed into a deep river that Ezekiel could not cross over. This was a miraculous flow of water. The living water that symbolized the abundant and ever-flowing fountain of grace of God. Afterwards, Yahweh brought Ezekiel to the river bank, and he saw the life-giving power of that living water. 
There were a number of trees that grew along both sides of the river. When the river flowed into the Dead Sea, its waters being healed, the waters became fresh. Dead Sea is totally dead, that nothing could live in it. But then it was transformed by the river and brought life. Verses 9 to 12 illustrate to us the great life-giving power of this gush of water. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fishes because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to Iglaim. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Wow! What a fantastic image of a paradise that reminds us of the Garden of Eden. That is the story of living water that caused striking changes, pointing to the ultimate source of life. It is from God. This vision reminds us of the living water that Jesus mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 5 to 30, with the Samaritan woman at the well. One of the stories in the Bible that I love, where a woman was given a new reputation. On verse 14, Jesus answered the woman, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Ezekiel viewed the same living water in his vision. Also from the Revelation to John chapter 22 verses 1 to 2, John had a vision of an angel showed to him the river of life, as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the holy city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. All these symbols of living waters represent the fullness of life with God and the eternal blessings only if we come to Him for quenching our spiritual thirst. Everything will live wherever the river flows. This is a powerful portrayal of a flowing water that brings blessing and miracle. It provided life, growth, vitality, refreshment, and hope. Ezekiel imagined of a water that overcomes death. Truly, this water is a symbol of a kind of eternal life that God wishes us to share with Him. We will live for that day. We should long for that day. We will long for that promise of God to be fulfilled more than anything else in this world. Amen. For our reflection, what effect does the river have and where does this river come from? What stops us from going deeper into the river? Can you identify specific things in your life that have hindered your growth in Christ? What impression of your future would someone pick up from watching the way in which you live out your Christian faith? Would that impression be anything like Ezekiel's vision for God's people?
Let us pray. Almighty God, the source of living water, give us that living water that we need to drink every day. Cleanse us from sin. Refresh our dryness in spirit and unfruitful lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.